Mikhail, good afternoon. Good to see you. Um, it's been another week of high stakes and high intensity. How do you reflect on the past week from Arsenal's perspective? As an experience, um, it wasn't the best one. Um, obviously, I had a fit in the league, I had a fit in, uh, in the Champions League, and, um, and I fully focus on the times that we have ahead of us with six games to go. We are again behind a city, and uh, we're going to go for a real goal. That next game is obviously Wolves away. How do you put that into context, given what's gone before? Well, the context is clear that um, if we win, we are top of the league. That's the context. You need anything else uh, to be motivated. Uh, you need anything else to go to that game with, uh, with your mind clear and the purpose very, very clear. You have a problem. And just finally for me, uh, the club announced some sad news today yeah. that uh, the passing of Sichips Kwezik, their former chairman and a great stalwart of the club. Have you got any words that you'd like to say about him? Well, um, obviously to his family and uh, very grateful. Uh, he was chairman when I was captain. Um, it's a personal figure that is uh, very well respected and loved around the football club. He's done so many incredible things um, to keep evolving and progressing this football club with very integral and, and good values and um, he needs to rest in peace now. Good to see you from PLP. Hello. So you've only lost two games this calendar year. You're two points off the top. Nothing is over until the last match, as you said. People love to highlight the negatives and talk about the lows, but these are the moments that you really learn how to succeed. How have you first had as manager seen the team psychologically grow and develop under your tenure here? Well, obviously it's been a, a very intense journey. Um, and when you're to be at the top, and you are fighting with such a level, um, you know that you're going to have to go through that. Uh, this job, um, this industry is constantly testing your resilience. It's constantly testing your ego. When things go well, when things don't go well, and you all the time have to be recycling that, and you have to be able to navigate and go through those moments in, in a natural way, understanding the context, and looking at the positives, that's the best thing you can do because that's the ones that really help learn and look forward. I wanted to ask about Timber and his role. Yeah. So when he comes back, where do you primarily sort of see him playing? He's very versatile, can play on the right or the left. But where do you see his best attributes sort of shine when he wants to come back and fight for a starting place? Both positions in precision, he played in, in both positions, right and, and left fullback in relation to the game as well, the players that we have available. We will, uh, we will use it in different ways. And finally, so you have two key players, obviously Saka, your captain Odegaard. When they're targeted by teams, it really does impact your overall style of play. How do you balance adapting the game when they're targeted so you can be a bit more unpredictable when you're, when you're building up your play, but also sticking true to your style and making sure they're individually taking risks and, and being different in their approach? Well, I think they are constantly targeted. Our best player, like any other opponent, uh, we always try to find ways and prepare the games to try to help them. Um, if they do try to do certain things to stop us to find other ways, um, other spaces, other players, other combinations. And this is a journey that we want to stop because there's always something else that they try. You have to adapt it and, and, uh, and make it work. Thank you. Thank you. We've got George from BBC. Mikhail, hello. Hi. So can we get some team news and in particular is it too soon for Timber still, possibly? Yeah, it is too soon. Uh, he's going to play a game <clears throat> with the under-23s. And, um, and after that, we will see better where he is, how he felt. Um, he looks really good in training, but it's that last biggest step that now we need to, to make it smaller and have the certainty that, um, that he's ready to go. Uh, anyone else? Everyone else OK? The rest is all good. Okay. Uh, just in terms of this, the last three games you've had, very tricky opposition, Bayern and, and Villa, how does that compare to last season where you had a similar blip? Is this just that you played better teams or is there anything anything in that that you've looked at possibly? It's what it is. We have to accept it. I think uh, the two games, especially the Bayern one at home uh, in the beginning, obviously, it, it could have been very different. The Villa way, I reviewed three times. I think we were the better team. We should have won the game. We didn't. The second half, we paid the price for the chances that we, we gave them, basically. And we have to move from there. And, um, and now it's about um, showing. We well, have to talk too much. It's now about showing against Wolves um, what we are made of and uh, turn the situation around. And, and the turnaround can look really, really positive for us.
if you don't win tomorrow, would you say that? I don't think about that. I think about winning tomorrow. Just so, but that if okay. there are many ifs that and if. I know the Sorry. result at the moment. I know, <laughs> I know the, the, the week hasn't been good, but still across the season, you you must feel like you are really closing the gap on on the teams around you, and you've just not got to fall away like you did last year. And it hasn't been good, uh, because of the results. Um, but it's been very good in other experiences, um, in other situations that we've done really well, and who knows how good it's going to be for us, for Wolves, or to fight better for the Premier League. I don't know. Nobody knows. And just one more, sorry. Um, there's been a lot over the last 24 hours about the FA Cup and scrapping replays, and you've won the competition. Um, are you just what's your thoughts as Arsenal have won it a lot the most? Just as the manager of Arsenal, what's your thoughts on scrapping the replay and, and what what the future looks like for the FA Cup? Well, it's not. We cannot only look at that in a in an isolated way, but with the calendar year that we have in the next <coughs> few seasons, obviously we have to take a game out from the players. So I think it's a, a very good possibility. Thank you. Brad from TalkSport. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Well, just to follow on from that, there's been a lot of complaints from EFL clubs about, you know, the FA Cup replays being scrapped next season. Do, do you sympathise with them? I understand um, every point of view. Um, at the end hours, mine is to protect our players. And when I looked at the amount of minutes and games that they played in the last two seasons with no breaks, how they're going to have to play in the next two days, uh, two years, sorry, um, that's not healthy. For sure. So somewhere, and I'm not saying it has to be that, but somewhere, somehow, we have to reduce the calendar. And looking at yourself and Arsenal, when, when you look at Liverpool, when Jurgen Klopp first took over, they had to endure a lot of disappointment. They got to the latter stages of you know, major tournaments in Europe. They got to the latter stages of, of domestic trophies in England. It didn't quite work out for them. And then look at what they've gone on to achieve in the last few years and the amount of trophies they've won. Do you, when you look at that, do you feel like Arsenal are, are on a similar journey to, to what Liverpool were under Jürgen Klopp? Well, you know that uh, the better you become and um, and the closer you are to fighting um, with the best teams that um, this league have ever had, not now but in the in the history of the Premier League, you know what the margins are, and uh, and we've been at the top for many many months in the last 24 months. And when you are there, there is only one way that you can go, or two. You stay there, or you go down. It's a fini. And there's only one winner. So you want to be in that mix, you have to cope with any situation that comes attached to that. Because if not, everything is a disappointment. But if you want to be from not being in the Champions League for seven years, to fight for the league two years in a row, send me a team that is on that. When you look at the squad, people have made a lot that maybe the likes of Fabio Vieira and Nelson Pro haven't started as many games as they would have liked this season. Do you have any regrets at the fact that you might not have given people like them more opportunities this season? It is a possibility. That's always going to come when you lose a game. Because when we beat Brighton and we had an unbelievable week and everybody was talking about us winning the league, nobody asked these questions. But uh, that's part of, the, of our industry. And lastly, a quick one on Wolves. What, what have you made of the job that Gary O'Neill has done? Unbelievable. So good. And you can tell how well they are coached, the spirit of the team, and the difficulties that they create against every opponent. Um, really good, really good side. It will be it will be really tough tomorrow, but um, we have prepared really good in the last two days. We had a great training session today. Looking forward to it again. That's great. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Hi Miguel, just looking at um, April as a month, going back over seasons, I think that's where, say, people may, may say that Arsenal seasons have kind of derailed, but for you, would you say people saying that's a physical or mental fatigue, is that a too easy a conclusion to come to? And for you internally, how do you kind of recognise what goes a little bit wrong in those periods? Well, a lot of times because the margins and, and the things that you are competing with um, are decided between that month and May, but before that you have to be nine months extremely consistent to that. And um, let's see, let's see what we can do now um, to fight for what we want, which is to win the Premier League. When, um, a couple of years ago, when you were going for the Champions League and you lost that Newcastle, I think you were very clear in recognising what went wrong at that time. Um, do you? How long does it take you, basically, to find out what you felt uh, went wrong, and 
when does that process start to kind of take place for you? Sometimes happens during the game, sometimes a minute after the game, and sometimes a year later. I cannot tell you. And as well, that perspective changes. Sometimes the impression that you have after the game becomes really different after two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, looking at it with a little bit of perspective. Um, but certainly, it's something that you have to do because it helps you to learn and to be better and, and to, to have better tools to decide better the next time. So I'm excited. Okay, we're talking about sort of replays and minutes players are having. When you hear, um, you know, Robbery saying, I need a rest, Pep saying, Holland and De Bruyne, I've got to come off. Do you worry about the sort of length of players' careers and also just the product of football in the future? Yes, but obviously the calendar um, continues to, to be more and more demanding and we have more games, more competition, less rest. We have two options, or we reduce that or we have more players in the squad. But to be able to do that as well, your financial capacity has to be much better because what you cannot drop is the level. So we have a level that is unbelievable in the in the Premier League and, and the teams that are competing, and this cannot be dropped. So we have to find a solution to that. And I think the players have to be listened much more because I think that they are the protagonists. On, on the current sort of situation, when you've had two defeats, people are criticising the team, looking at the squad. What's your sort of message to the players when they're coming under? That I'm fully behind them. That thank you so much for the journey that we are together. Thank you so much for being in April and champion for the quarterfinals of the Champions League and being so close. And thank you so much for competing against the best team in the in the history of the Premier League and the best team in the last eight years in this competition with Liverpool. And to be there with a chance to win it. So thank you so much for everything that they've done because it's unbelievable. Okay. Two games now where we've talked about sort of maybe a, a decline in the second half in the, the levels of your performances. Just thinking back to what we've been saying already about the, the sort of the fatigue and the calendar. Do you think that's related to that? Sometimes the opponent as well. Eh? The opponents play and, and they are very good and you have to congratulate them um, when it goes. Um, sometimes it would be my fault as well not to change anything, not to make the right call. As soon as they play, they won't have that spark. But uh, yeah, what would have happened if, if we scored two goals, three goals, four goals against Aston Villa in the first half, or two or three in, against Bayern Munich in the first half, like we did against Brighton, we did before? Who knows? At the end, um, that the, the, the game state is so important in football. And, um, and you have to recognize that you can't just isolate a moment to make an evaluation. It's, it's too simplistic. Do you think maybe um, sort of when you're needing something right at the end to bring up or get by in the latter stages, and then you're looking for that extra bit of energy, that extra bit of spark that maybe some of your key players have played maybe more minutes than, than other rivals. And do you think maybe that's a part of just why in the last stages of recent games you keep struggling to, to find something? I don't know, obviously, when you look at the, the, the schedule that Bayern had and we had and the amount of game that they play and they rest 10 players uh, nine days ago and they rest three days before the game another nine players. It is different, but in these leagues they do what they do, which is or they cancel the games or they bring them forward uh, to have more rest for the Champions League. Um, we are not doing that and we're putting even more and more pressure on ourselves. But this is what we have, it's not an excuse, it's the reality. Should the Premier League do that, something similar to what this game does? Well, I think if you want to compete in the same condition, I think we should be able to have at least the same amount of recovery um, between games. That's at least something that we can do.